Why are we looking at the information screen of my Sovol SV01 3D printer? Because my printer shipped with firmware version 1160, and there is a much newer firmware version out there, and it's got some features that we absolutely want to take advantage of. So today, we're going to update this printer to the latest firmware that's available for it, Marlin 2.0, and we're going to take a look at some of the exciting features that Marlin 2.0 brings to the table that this printer didn't have when it shipped. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Now, the first thing we need to do if we're going to update the firmware on our printer is download the firmware. And the firmware that these printers run is, well, for the most part, it's Marlin. And if you're coming from the FPV world, like most of my viewers are, you could think of Marlin as being like the clean flight or the beta flight. It's the firmware that runs on your flight controller, except your flight controller is a 3D printer. So here we are at the Sovol 3D website, and this is their downloads page where you can download the user manual, et cetera, et cetera, and the firmware. And you see we've got two choices here. Sovol SV01, Marlin 2.0 firmware and source code, and source code with BL Touch. If you have installed a BL Touch sensor on your Sovol, then you're going to want to download this one. If you have not installed a BL Touch sensor and you're going to download this one. That's the one I'm going to get. Now that's going to link us to this Google Drive folder. I guess they're storing them on Google Drive. Okay, no big deal. And we're just going to hit download. A zip file is going to download. And in that zip file, if we go into the Marlin 200 folder and then for some reason there's another Marlin 200 folder. Okay, whatever. Uh, right here, this is the file we want. Sovol SV01 Marlin 200.hex. We're going to take that. We're going to drag it out of our the zip file onto the desktop or into your downloads folder or wherever, that's the file that you want to get. The program we're going to use to flash is Cura. Cura is the slicer that I am using. If you want to know more about like what slicing is and how I'm using a slicer to print 3D printed objects, I've got a video about that and there's a link in the video description. In Cura, there's an option to just flash the firmware to your 3D printer. And that option exists on a whole bunch of different, basically whatever slicer you're using, it probably can update the, the, the fir firmware. There's a whole bunch of third-party apps for managing 3D printers that can update firmware. Whatever you've got, it'll probably work if you just do what we're doing, but we're gonna use Cura. So we'll just plug in our USB plug here. Have to use an adapter here because this is actually a mini USB and I don't have very many mini USB cords. So here we are in Cura, and we're looking at our Sovol SV01 printer, which is plugged in via USB. I'm gonna assume you've already added this to, at some point in the past, if you need instructions how to add this, they come with the Sovol manual, or you can check out the Sovol Facebook group. The next thing we need to do is go settings, printer, manage printers, select our Sovol SV01 and hit update firmware, and upload custom firmware. We're going to go to our downloads folder where we downloaded that Marlin hex file. We're going to select it and hit open. And if we're very lucky, the update should happen. I was kind of wondering if something would happen here on the screen while the update was happening. It doesn't look like it is. Is it? Oh yeah, no, it's not responding though. Okay, don't unplug anything. Don't mess anything up. This is the part where it could all go horribly wrong. Now I can already see here that this screen looks a little different. Let's see if we can, oh, yeah, no, it's all different. It's all different. About printer, printer info. I don't know what that all is, but it's all new. <laughs> yes, Merlin 200. <laughs> so what did we add? What do we add here? What do we got that we didn't have before? Here in the configuration menu, we have the option to turn the runout sensor on and off. A lot of people find that the runout sensor is more trouble than it's worth. And in fact, you can see in this case, I have temporarily disabled mine by sticking a piece of filament in it because I sometimes have trouble getting the damn filament to go through and I just didn't want to deal with it. So in this case, we could just turn that off in the menu instead of having to temporarily disable it like this. Another feature that is very, very worth our attention is in the about printer and thermistors menu, we can see that runaway watch is on. This is runaway temperature protection or thermal protection. And it's basically the thing that prevents your printer from accidentally burning your house down. You always want that to be on. If it ever was off, you would definitely want to know it. And yet some firmware is shipped with runaway temperature protection off. It's a horrible oversight if that happens and it's good to just be able to confirm that that's on. 
But the feature I'm most excited about is this one, and this is the one that's gonna help us out the most on a day-to-day -day basis, the level corners feature. Let me show you how that works. When we activate the level corners feature, the first thing it's gonna do is auto home, and it's gonna give you the option to then manually level the bed. But then it's gonna ask you next corner, and if you just click, it'll quickly and automatically move to the next corner. And it's gonna just keep cycling through these corners, letting you tweak the springs and adjust the level of each corner until you get done and you're convinced that the bed is level. Now, the reason I think this feature is so freaking cool is, well, first of all, just having to disable steppers and then move the bed around by hand when you're, when you're leveling your bed is kind of annoying. But it also creates imprecision. Every time you touch the gantry or touch the bed to sort of push or pull it, especially if you're working on a machine that doesn't have dual Z-axis. The Sobel has dual Z-axis, so the X gantry stays pretty level. But every time you touch and push and move it, you're actually slightly affecting the level and it can actually cause a little bit of loss of precision. By letting the stepper motors move the, the printer around during the leveling process, you ensure that the level is maintained. So now you've updated your printer to Marlin 2.0 and you have these new features. But for the most part, your experience of using it is gonna be the same as it ever was. It turns out there are more features in Marlin 2.0 that can be unlocked, that are just sort of tucked away in this build of Marlin that Sobel is distributing for their printer. And the feature that I really want to explore is a feature called mesh bed leveling. See, here's the problem with bed leveling. You can level the four corners of your bed but what if the bed is not perfectly flat? What if it's got like a, a, a cup or a dip in the center so that when you level the corners, the center is too high? Well, mesh bed leveling lets you tell the printer about that in software and it can automatically take care of that. This video has already gone long enough and we're gonna close it out, but I am gonna, right this minute, I'm gonna go and start making a video about mesh bed leveling and follow it up. And we're gonna use that same process of flashing it but we're gonna build our own custom compile of Marlin that includes the mesh bed leveling. For now though, we're gonna sign off. Thank you guys so much for watching. There are links to the, the software I'm using. There's a link to my video about slicing and what is Cura and how to download and install Cura. And of course, there are links to, if you wanna buy your own S Sobol SVO1 and follow along with what I'm doing with it. That's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and happy printing. Happy printing, everybody.